video today for you on behalf of Collego Cymru to just explain uh, non-accredited learning programmes in ILS. Um, as you're aware, it was part of our project last year where we received funding from Welsh Government to move this agenda forward. We've now secured a second lot of funding and we're increasing um, what we're delivering. So we've now done non-accredited learning for six programmes within the department. Um, the main emphasis of this video is to show you guys how to develop your own programmes for learning that are non-accredited. When learners arrive with us, we're, we're very lucky in that they each have an iPad that they have the use of when they're in college. So this is one of our learners' iPads and we do two things to start off. So we start an assessment process which can be tracked on the iPad. We use Google Sheets for this. And this is Gareth's iPad and his tracking sheet. So we have a tracker where we will assess Gareth and then monitor how he is getting on. So we have a cover page which has a photograph of Gareth um, and it also says on here what the plans are going to be for Gareth when he leaves college. Now we track across the four pillars of ILS which is how we timetable our sessions. So in independent living skills we have different areas which you can see down here which gives a broad assessment area for independent living skills. So at the top we have can the learner demonstrate the ability to listen to and follow dialogue and then we will be able to say here in the individualised assessment how Gareth is in this area. Further down we have can the learner demonstrate social awareness in different settings and we've said there for Gareth that he has a tendency to speak to anyone, shout out to people and use over familiar terms such as babe, sweetheart, etc. Now it's obviously really important for Gareth that he learns not to do this. And this way of delivering means that we can target the areas that are important to him. So what Gareth has been working on is using people's own names, asking if he doesn't know what that is. And although there are still occasions, you see we're tracking it for term one, there are still occasional slips here where he will use our babe or mate. We are making progress. So we have, as I said, independent living skills. We have health and well-being. Again, we carry out the assessment for the different areas. And we can see from the assessment what it is that the learner needs to work on. And you can see there that Gareth's had two targets to work in health and well-being. To choose something other than chips on a Friday for lunch and to also to grab a tissue whenever he begins to feel a sneeze or cough coming on. The tissue box is kept on his table and he has tissues in his pockets before going out and about. So you can see these are really important things for Gareth to do and that's going to help him get on in life. We have accessing the community. So we have all our different target areas here. Again, we carry out our individualised assessment and then we see if there's something that he wants to work on. And what we've picked for Gareth, it very much late, relates to the target I was just speaking about, which is not to initiate verbal engagement with people he doesn't know and not to try and touch or tap people he doesn't know. And this is an area that he is working on. It's a real priority in life to be able to do that. We also have area for work skills and essential skills. So this is the tracking system. Tracking and assessment go together. And Gareth has this on his iPad, but we also have it on the computers. And of course, they're able to share it with parents and anybody else who might need it. Might need it. Gareth then starts off the year by setting out books. So we use Book Creator, which we find absolutely fantastic. And he has a targets book. He has a book for health and well-being. He has a book for work skills. He has a book for accessing the community and he has a book for independent living skills. And what he does is to take photographs and record the different things he's doing. And the beauty with Book Creator is that we have not only sound, where he can speak, but we can also pop in little videos. So these are all the things that Gareth has been doing this year. And this is him at his work at Bodafin Farm, 
and we're able to drop in a little video of him working at the farm. At the end of the year what we do is we create a yearbook. So we take highlights if you like and successes from all the different books and create a yearbook that the learner can take away with them. These are just starting off now because we are in February. So at the end of the year, Gareth will take away a yearbook which will show what he has done throughout the whole year. After the holidays, Connor, you're going to be starting to make your yearbook for this year. You've got nothing in this one yet, have you? I haven't yet. No. Shall we have a look at last year's one? Okay. And see what was in last year's yearbook. There's last year's one. Do you want to open it up? Okay. That's a man and let's turn a page. So you're going to be able to put all the things you've done this year in your new yearbook and then we're able to share that with mum and all the other people who work with you so that they can see what all you have done. We're going to put in some videos this year and we'll put in the targets you've been working on and all the things you've achieved. But at the moment you've just got an empty book, haven't you? Yeah. So after the holidays we need to get working on that and make your new book look like this one. Hopefully you found um, the, inf the video that we've produced helpful. Um, hopefully it's shown how to deliver non-accredited learning programmes within the classroom um, and hopefully what Mel has um, shown you has been helpful in doing that. And then you've obviously seen it in action with what the learners have shown you in their short clip. I think the crucial things to remember about non-accredited learning are that you need detailed schemes of learning um, and session plans that can be flexible and changed to meet the needs of the learners and to reflect what's been achieved in the previous session to move on to um, moving them towards their progression and their, their targets. Um, RAPA is very important within this way of learning. Um, I'm sure you're all familiar with RAPA, but it's the reviewing and recording of progress against achievement. And hopefully Mel's demonstrated how we do that within Life and Work Skills 1 with the pre-entry learners. Um, if you need any further information or help with anything, please do not hesitate to contact me. <laughs>